look at this, you can see the anatomy very nicely. We have a, this is the septum, as you can see. There's the inferior turbinate. And you can go all the way back to the nasal pharynx. And this is the middle turbinate and where it attaches to the lateral wall of the nose or the middle space, middle wall of the maxilla as well. So if you go inside, you can see this is the uncinate process, which is the gate number one. And this is the bulla, gate number two. And if you push the middle turbinate gently to one side, you can see how the middle turbinate curves laterally. And this curvature forms the ground lamella. And this also forms the third wall, which is, you can see the vertical aspect and the horizontal aspect of the third gate as well. So gate number one is the uncinate process. Gate number two is the bulla. Gate number three is the ground lamella, which you can see how the middle turbinate is turning laterally, the vertical as well as the horizontal portion. And again, behind the bulla, you can have some space. So if there's a space behind this bulla, there'll be a retro bulla air cell. And if there's a, any space above the bulla, there'll be the supra bulla air cell. Okay? So based on this, we know the configuration of the anatomy quite well. If we want to do a sphenoid surgery, if we want to do a sphenoid through the natural ostia, the function, all we need to do is gently move the middle turbinate away, and we can see the superior turbinate there. And the superior turbinate is where the posterior ethmoids open up, and that's probably the ostia of the posterior ethmoid region. And then if you gently move the superior turbinate medially, and that, I think this patient has got a supreme turbinate as well, a small one, and that should be where the sphenoid ostia is. In this case, there's probably some ice cube, and you can't see. So this is how we actually go to identify the sphenoid ostia in a natural manner. Then you can just push this back gently, as you can see. So step number one is to do an uncinectomy. So two, there are a few ways of doing an uncinectomy. We can do an anti-grade uncinectomy, which is front to back, or retrograde uncinectomy, which is back to front. So usually, if the uncinate is well formed, I like to do an anti-grade uncinectomy. So in this case, I will show you how we do an anti-grade uncinectomy on this side, and I'll show you how to do a retrograde uncinectomy on the opposite side. Touch the uncinate process. Can you see where it's swinging? Okay. Where it's swinging is the attachment of the uncinate to the lateral wall. So if you put the freest elevator at the junction where the uncinate meets, okay, and then you go up all the way, and then you go down all the way. This part is very important. You must swing and remove the tail of the uncinate process nicely there. That is the tail of the uncinate process. If you dissect the tail of the uncinate process nicely, you will usually end up looking into the maxillary ostia. So this is the uncinate, which is the first that's the first gate. I always like to, re to leave a small bit of upper part of the uncinate because that will give me my landmark to do frontal sinus surgery later. Okay? So now, if you look at here, the maxilla will just be at this corner. This is where the maxilla will be at 7 o'clock there. Okay? Please elevator again. So you can actually enlarge the maxillary ostia by using a simple freest elevator. And you can see that's the maxilla opening here. Can you have a J-sucker? Do you have a J-sucker? No. So you can use a J-sucker if required. And that should open up the maxillary ostia quite nicely. There. Can you see? That's the maxillary op ostia opened up. And all this is only possible if you remove the tail of the uncinate process. That's the maxilla open up there. How do we enlarge the maxillary opening? Usually, this is more than adequate for the function. If you need a maxilla to be open for you to approach to infratemporal fossa or to remove a tumor in the maxilla, then you can enlarge it much more. But as far as function is concerned, this is more than adequate. And the trick is not to remove the mucosa all around it. So we usually either enlarge it with the freest elevator or we enlarge it with a J-sucker like that. So do you, give me a curate there. Let me try with the curate for it. Okay. So this, the position of this maxilla is slightly abnormal. So you can just use this 
and enlarge it slightly like this without touching the microslavic clearance. So that's the idea. This is more than adequate. So that is the bulla coming into view. So at this juncture, either we can go on to do the gate number two, which is the bulla, and gate number three, which is the ground lamella, or we can go straight to the frontal sinus. If you go straight to the frontal sinus, this is called an intact bulla technique, which means you climb the bulla into the frontal sinus. The frontal sinus will always be between the antenate process, that's the remnant of the antenate process, and the bulla. And there's always a vertical bar. Can you see that? There's always a vertical bar that comes between the antenate process that goes up all to the bulla region. There's a vertical bar there. And the frontal sinus will always be slightly medial to the vertical bar unless the antenate process is attached to the orbit. So now I'm going to push my scope to the zero degree scope. I'm not changing scope. I'm just going to move my scope from being anchored to the top of the nose to the floor. And now you look up and you can actually already see the frontal recess coming into view. Okay? There's a frontal recess area coming into view. So all we need to do is enlarge this opening and we should be in the frontal recess. Jessica, or I me, mean, give me a correct yeah? So if we open up the antenate process here, flick it forward, as you can see, we are now in the frontal recess. Try to minimize the amount of damage that you have on the mucosa. So with this, this most probably is the frontal drainage, or this is the frontal drainage going into the frontal sinus. Okay? Gate number two. Please let me say again. For gate number two, what we're going to do is we're going to open the bulla. And where do we open the bulla? We open it exactly at the part where there is most where it's most prominent, like this. Okay? Once you've opened this, you have to copy. Oh, Blake's is fine. Then you can actually remove the lateral wall, the middle wall of the bulla. Here. You've got a bit of ice cube there, as you can see. So the idea is to preserve as much mucosa as possible. So I'm removing the anterior wall of the bulla. So this side, we're going to use only coal instrument suction. And you can see now we have opened up the bulla and preserved the mucosa all around it. Can you see? So the, the mucosa has been preserved. So what you're looking at now is where the middle turbinate turns laterally to form the ground lamella. So that's the vertical part of the ground lamella. That's the horizontal part of the ground lamella. So when you break this, you enter gate number three. And where do you enter is always at the junction between the vertical and the horizontal. So the anterior ethmoids will have multiple air cells, 11 to 15, small air cells. The posterior ethmoids will usually have very few air cells, but they are much bigger. So again, the idea is you want to preserve as much mucosa as possible. In the cadaver, the mucosa tends to collapse. And you can see that that is the posterior ethmoid, as you can see. Blixley. So you can see that in this case, the mucosa is already collapsing because it's edematous and will remove the mucosa here. So now you're actually looking at the posterior ethmoid. Okay. So how many instruments have we used so far? Suction? How many instruments have we used so far? Freer's elevator, Blakesley, and a suction. Okay? You should dissect here and you will find the superior turbinate. Can you see that? So when you find the superior turbinate here, you know that you are in the posterior ethmoid. The superior turbinate forms the medial border of the posterior ethmoid, as, as you can see here. So now you can see we are looking at gate number four, which is the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus. That is the orbit, the lamina papacea here. So for us to go into the sphenoid sinus, I, I suspect the sphenoid sinus in this case is going to have a lot of uh, ice. So let's see whether we can enter the sphenoid sinus easily or not. Let's see again. I'll just remove the... Okay. okay. Can I have a bit of black I'll just remove the bone for a while. So if, if you are worried about entering the sphenoid sinus and not sure whether you're in the right plane or not, what I suggest is, please elevate it, always find the superior turbinate. There, correct? 
So with the superior turbinate suction, okay, you can actually see the anterior wall. There. That is the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus. See the sir? So you can see the superior turbinate. If we displace it, we are already looking at the sphenoidmoidal recess, correct? And that's where the sphenoid sinus would be. So you notice the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus always go low and go inferior and you will enter the sphenoid sinus. Medial and inferior and you will enter the sphenoid sinus there. there. So now we are in the sphenoid sinus. I think it's a bit of ice cube inside here. Otherwise, we should be okay. Next slide. And let me remove all these bone spicules as you can see. Now, based on this, we have now opened up gate number one, which is the anterior, which is the alternate process. We've opened up gate number two, and that's the optic nerve. Can you guys see that? All right, that's the optic nerve there, and that's the carotid artery here. That's the optic nerve, and that's the carotid artery. This is probably a vertical shelf. And once you can see the optic nerve, and you can see the carotid artery down here, the optical carotid recess, you know you're in the sphenoid sinus, all right? This is where the orbit would be. Okay, you can see we had exactly the orbit there. And this is the optic nerve, all right? We're in the sphenoid sinus. That's the carotid artery, okay? So the first wall, antenate, was here, okay? This is where the bulla was, the lateral lamella, and up here would be the skull base. Can you see? I, I, exactly on the skull base. Okay? So this, and that's the maxillary sinus there. Okay? 